Hey, what's going on everyone? Matthew from TheRightTrader.com back today with another daily crypto update. Today I'm going to go over some news and talk about the market that's continuing to fall as well as my normal schedule which is Nano, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Litecoin, Ripple, Neo, Vertcoin, Monero, Omisigo, Lisk, Cardano, and IOTA. All of those in a more detailed technical analysis in that order on TradingView in just a second. Other than that, make sure to check out my premium content where you can find monthly cryptocurrency buying opportunities, as well as five high return cryptocurrencies for your 2018 portfolio. I'll have a link to that in the description of this video. And other than that, make sure to check out Binance if you want to start trading altcoins and go follow me on Twitter if you want to get live cryptocurrency market updates. So let's get ahead and start off with what's going on with the general market. What we're seeing is a lot of cryptocurrencies that took yet another hit and we're now pushing back down towards some pretty big support levels, right? Especially Bitcoin hanging on its last support level before going back and testing a major uptrend line support, which is not necessarily a bad thing if that happens, but it does mean that cryptocurrencies are likely to take another hit if that occurs. And once again, right, we're kind of looking towards Bitcoin and Ethereum to gauge the market strength. They're definitely moving lower right now. So that's that's kind of what I'm looking towards. And Overall, a lot of cryptocurrencies today down uh, another 10 to 15 percent. We'll see if this continues. Either way, I'll go into more detail on that uh, when we get to the technical analysis side of things. But let's talk a little bit about some news. And Charlie announced that there was yet another payment processor for Litecoin called LightPal, trying to be a bit of a PayPal and make it easier for merchants to accept LTC. It's a great direction. A lot of cryptocurrencies have to move in this um, in that path to really get some wider adoption and it's going to be key for a lot of cryptocurrencies. So it's good to see that PayPal is working that angle. Other than that, Bittrex announced that it was accepting USD fiat deposits, which is great. It gives another alternative to uh, Coinbase and GDAX. And we're seeing a lot of crypto exchanges starting to do that, right? Things like Robinhood, now Bittrex, giving, you know, more alternatives and just making it easier for, for people to bring fiat money into crypto. So I think that's a really good thing. And let's get started with the technical analysis. Uh, starting off with Rayblox. So what we saw with Rayblox is it uh, finally got out of its downtrend, right? And went all the way up to basically 200,000 Satoshis after the Binance listing and everything. But what we saw after that was a little bit of a, a sell the the news event, right? Don't forget about the, the long-term trading saying, which is uh, buy the rumors, sell the news. And people bought the anticipation of the Binance listing, which is fine. But once they saw that, it didn't get the reaction that they wanted, right? Uh, when it got actually got listed, we saw a bit of a sell-off, and it doesn't help that the market has been going down, right? So this is already um, this is another big reason why Rayblox now Nano has been falling uh, lower again. With that being said, we got a nice bounce off our short-term uptrend line, so that is good. Now we're just gonna have to see if that holds, right? Currently facing a bit of resistance at around uh, 155,000 satoshis. Currently breaking a little bit above that. We're, we're, you know, testing the, the downtrend line here, the short-term downtrend line. That's ultimately what we want to get out of to move back towards 180,000 Satoshis and, and hopefully even 200,000 Satoshis. But considering that the market is still weak right now and that could definitely continue a bit longer, we can't know for sure, right? And we have to be a bit more uh, cautious. So as for some support levels, if we do end up losing the uptrend line support, next big one is going to be at around uh, 126,000 Satoshis. Let's get started with Bitcoin now. And Bitcoin dropped back below the uptrend line in the short term and came back basically and tested that $7,950 support level. That's our, our last support really until we'll probably go back down to, you know, there is some support at around $6,000. So that pretty much be where the uptrend line is, probably a little bit higher than that as you can see. But I'm talking about this uptrend line right here, right? This is a more longer term major uptrend support level. Um, that's this line right here, and that's where we would probably bounce off of if we were to lose that $7,950 support level. So could that happen? Absolutely. The market is definitely weak. There's no way to know if it will happen right now. It would be good, um, and it would be kind of the best case scenario to just consolidate above $8,000 and $9,000. That's fine, right? So with that being said, we're now back in this channel between this downtrend line here and uh, this other one over here so we can move lower in that channel if we lose the support or we're going to hold above that $8,000 mark and just consolidate in this area which like I said would probably be the best scenario right now 
And as for the indicators, not looking great. RSI probably going to dip in below that 30 line now. So let's take a look at Ethereum and take a look at how it's been doing. Once again, keep in mind that Bitcoin and Ethereum do tend to lead the market. And those are really the ones that we're looking towards to kind of see if we're going to get another big drop or something like that. Litecoin is back to downtrending now in the short term. So we do want to see it exit this downtrend line to hopefully at least consolidate in those higher levels towards $900 now. Um, ultimately, we'll see if that's going to happen in the next couple days. Still downtrending pretty heavily on all the indicators. And on the current candlestick, it's actually holding up pretty decently compared to Bitcoin that's really hovering it around its support level. But we may see it, you know, come back and really test that $764 mark. Or if we see it lose that level, probably going to test this longer term uptrend line right here, which is fine, right? Because that means that it really went as low as it probably could go, um, except if there's a complete disaster in the crypto market, which doesn't look like it's going to be the case, right? I think right now what's happening is just a big sell-off after all the hype that we saw in December with a lot of mainstream people coming into crypto, right? Average Joes and stuff like that. So you may see this come back and test the uptrend line support at, at that, uh, you know, it's not going to matter that much between $764 and around $700, not that big of a difference. Uh, and probably not going to see it lose that level, right? Unless things get really bad, which is always possible, like I said. Let's take a look at Litecoin now. And Litecoin is kind of holding up decently. You know, we did lose the short-term uptrend line support, which means that things might start to slow down as far as the actual, you know, price increase goes. But at least we're holding uh, above $149, which is some pretty major support, right? Uh, all the way around $140, $145. There's a lot of support there and we are holding above that. So hopefully that continues and maybe we can slowly move a bit higher or consolidate in that, in that area. But really I'd say for Litecoin, we, we just want to make sure that we hold above $100, right? And not go back below that. That would be very bad. And that would probably mean that the crypto market is extremely weak. Uh, could always happen if we start to see it fall lower. But for now, it seems to be holding up at around $150. Indicator is pretty flat, which does mean that it is pretty likely that we see some some more consolidation here in the short term. Let's take a look at Ripple and keep in mind that consolidation is not a bad thing right now considering how weak the market is. Ripple right now is back below that 84 cent support level. That is now resistance of course, still downtrending on the indicators and you know the histogram is very flat right now. I'd expect uh, Ripple to consolidate between 84 cents and 65 cents right now just because there's too much resistance, I feel like, with this downtrend line uh, and the previous levels to get back above just yet, right? Let's take a look at NEO now and see what NEO has been up to. Uh, NEO and Ethereum have been the stronger cryptocurrencies recently, so we'll see if that continues throughout this weaker period in the market. But right now, NEO got a bounce off that $100 mark, and it's still pretty close to that level, currently trading at $107, right below the... Um, kind of on the, the lower Bollinger Band right now. As for the indicators, still downturning. Probably going to see NEO kind of bounce up and down. Um, basically, this little symmetrical triangle that we have going on right here, right? And we'll see. We'll see if it holds $100. Hopefully, it doesn't go lower than $85 because that would be kind of the, the last big support level before pretty major drop all the way back down to, you know, $50, even $40, right? Let's take a look at our next cryptocurrency, which is going to be Vertcoin, and let's see how Vertcoin has been holding up. So Vertcoin lost the $3.23 support level after acting very weak and you know, really just hanging right above it, finally lost that support level. Now, unless we see it bounce pretty quickly, get back above $3.23, we're probably going to see Vertcoin fall all the way down to either $2 at best, or what's more likely is the bigger support level at $1.54, right? This is further confirmed and likely by the fact that we're downtrending now on the RSI, getting very close to that 30 line. Once we break below that 30 line on the RSI, probably gonna mean that we're really, you know, in a pretty weak period for Vertcoin at least. Let's take a look at the next cryptocurrency, which is gonna be Monero and see how Monero has been doing. So Monero is currently tra trading at $219, uh, still downtrending on a lot of indicators, maybe flattening out a little bit on the RSI, Nothing too significant. The histogram is pretty flat right now as well. That tells me that we're probably just going to continue our consolidation between $200 and $257, currently experiencing a very flat candlestick. So let's go over to our next cryptocurrency, 
which is going to be, I need to pull out my list here, um, Omisigo, and let's see what Omisigo has been doing. So Omisigo just lost, once again, the $12 support level, and that means that we don't have much support, to be honest, uh, up until, you know, $9, but really the next big support level is at $7. So seeing how the market is pretty weak right now, I would not be surprised to see it trickle down lower as it gets more downward pressure from its downtrend line and, you know, probably going to start moving lower and lower now, breaking back below $10. Once that happens, probably going to see it pretty quickly reach 9 8 maybe even $7, right? And, and then consolidate in this lower range over here. So we are shaving off a lot of the gains that cryptocurrencies experienced in recent times. With that being said, that does kind of leave an opportunity now looking forward um, for uh, another opportunity for people who maybe missed out on that initial big rise uh, back in you know December and, and November. So we'll see how that plays out, right? But let's take a look at the next cryptocurrency, which is Lisk. And Lisk is back below $20, probably going to move back to $17 here. Hopefully it's going to be able to consolidate in this, this area. Uh, it, it could definitely lose that $17 support level, however, and move back towards $12 which would pre put us back to where it was um, right after the big breakout, right, basically. And as for the indicators, you know, lost the uptrend line support on the RSI, broke out of the uptrend on the histogram, and now basically moving lower on all indicators. Let's take a look at Cardano, which is actually acting pretty strong yesterday. And what we saw was, since the market was so weak, wasn't able to really make any moves, uh, sustain, got a lot of downward pressure from the middle band over here, that's the brown line right here. And we now lost the uptrend line support. Still downtrending on the indicators. Uh, we are out of the uptrend on the... We are out of the uptrend, however, on the RSI, but it looks like it might get back into you know, more uh, downslope. And really, what I'd say right now is we're still in our range between 4,000 Satoshis and 5,125 Satoshis. Could definitely see some consolidation in that range, but if the market continues its weakness, we're probably going to see... Cardano move back towards 4,000 Satoshis and could even lose it or lose that support level go to back down to 3,000 Satoshis. So that is likely if we see it continue to trickle down lower. And finally, we're going to take a look at IOTA, which is actually acting pretty bad yesterday and is at some much lower support levels now. Looks like it is continuing to slowly fall lower, now trading at $1.69. Not looking great on the indicators, definitely moving towards some lower levels, especially on the RSI, getting close to that 30 line. And at this point, you know, we have support at $1.47 and then $1.13, right? So we'll see. That that should be kind of the, the big support level where we should get a bounce if it will fall that low. Otherwise, you know, we may even drop below a dollar if things get that bad, which means that you know, that's a massive drop for, for IOTA there if that happens. And with that being said, everyone, this is the end of the daily crypto update. Make sure to check out my premium content and to follow me on Twitter for live cryptocurrency market updates. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.